Lord, on this Christmas morning, a morning that looks so different for so many of us, yet the same truth is true today as it has always been for these past years that Christ has been in the flesh. Lord, we're reminded this day of the wonder and the joy that this morning brings. That you did not stand far off, but sent your Son to take on our flesh and be among us. Help us as we encounter your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. A Roman emperor named Caesar Augustus orders a census. A man 1,400 miles away from Rome hears this order, and he knows that he has to go back to his hometown of Bethlehem. That man lives in a place that the emperor really doesn't care a whole lot about. It's a far-flung province known for its political unrest and strangely specific religious life. But in the grand scheme of the empire, this great Roman empire that stretches from seemingly one end of the world to the other, Judea doesn't seem to matter a whole lot. But Joseph is a part of this empire, so this man takes his soon-to-be wife, who happens to be pregnant, and they go to Bethlehem. And while they're in Bethlehem, the woman feels the baby coming, and she gives birth, and it is like any other birth. The, the woman swaddles the baby in cloths to make sure that the baby's limbs and body grows straight, and she lies him in a manger because there isn't any room for them in the house. And so a baby, this baby, is born to an ordinary woman in a town that isn't her own in the hinterlands of the Roman Empire. And yet today, of all the babies born in the world, we gather to celebrate the birth of this particular baby. Because there is something about this birth that is different. We may have been told by others, parents, family members, friends, preachers in pulpits, that there is something different about this birth. Or maybe we've grown up with a tradition of recognizing this birth each year, remembering this birth, and so we gather to honor the tradition. But maybe there is something about this birth, something that we can't exactly name, that draws us in this morning, that beckons us to come in and take a closer look. Maybe this baby is different, not because my parents told me so, or because my culture told me so, but because of something else. Maybe I see something of myself in this child. He's a helpless infant, lying there in a manger. He needs his mother. He needs food. He needs sleep. He's helpless, and I can understand that. Eventually, this baby is going to grow up and learn a trade. He will know the struggles of life. He will get hungry. He will be thirsty. He will need rest. His eyes will cry tears. He will sweat. He will have friends, he will be betrayed, he will be abandoned, and he will die. He is as human as I am, and I see myself in him. But there's something else about him, something that's different from me. He had an ordinary birth, but the events surrounding that birth are anything but ordinary. Each event is like heaven coming to earth, heaven breaking in to our world. An angel told the boy's mother that she would give birth to this baby, although she was a virgin. The baby would be conceived of the Holy Spirit and have no human biological father. And then after the birth, these shepherds, these outcasts in the field, show up at the manger unannounced, having just seen angels of their own. The angels told them that this baby is the Savior the Messiah, the Lord. And so now they stand here with the baby's mother and adoptive father peering into this manger, wondering what this is all about. They do not know the full story of who this child is or who he will be, but they know that God is up to something here. And they stand there praising God and pondering what it all might mean. Today, we, like those shepherds, and Mary, and Joseph, stand here looking into the manger, wondering what this all might mean for us. 
What is it about this baby that is different? It isn't that he would grow up to be this great, excellent, moral teacher. And we don't look into the manger and see someone who is famous just because he did some great things in his life and healed some people. There's something more. There's something more that draws us in. Today we look into the manger and we see something so scandalous and so beautiful. We see humanity and God together, united in this baby. We see the incarnate Son of God, Jesus Christ. We see the timeless one enter into history. We see the creator become a part of his creation. We see God take on our flesh, a flesh that he will never take off. God does not stand far off today. No, he comes close to us. Today on Christmas, we celebrate and we ponder and we reflect on the mystery that God has become one of us in the person of Jesus Christ. He became human and dwelt among us. God is truly with us and he will never leave us. So look into the manger this morning. Ponder the mystery of the word made flesh. There is nothing to do today than to just look and adore and worship. On this Christmas, when everything looks so different, when everything seems so strange, this fact stays the same. We gather this morning to remember that God became human in Jesus Christ. We remember that he is with us, and we remember that God so loved the world that he sent his son to take on flesh that we might know full life with God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.